Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles Nevertrade Gaming and bringing you another Ninth Age Battle Report. This is a 4500 point game between Ogre Cons and Beast Herds. We're playing in circle deployment and hold the, hold the ground uh, center objective uh, for our objective. I'm going to put the lists in the description or the comments of the video. This is our army's arrayed for battle before deployment. Spells, I took shamanism. I got Savage Fury, Waken the Beast, Break the Spirit, and Totemic Summon. Also got the Hereditary spell. Uh, we started dropping together. I dropped in my bruisers towards that building. My opponent dropped a Minotaur and a Chariot. Uh, and then I kind of started to feel like I had an idea of what I wanted to do with the army, so I just sort of put everything else down. This is my opponent's spell. He's got Haste in the Hour and Spectral Blades on his Evocation Adept. And then he's got a Wig of the Beast and Savage Fury on his Shamanism Adept. And then he's, of course, got his Totems on his BSB. So this is my deployment, uh, starting from the left of the picture. I got the rock -a rock um, next to my bombardiers. I got some yetis, um, kind of right at the corner of that encircled deployment. I got the attacker. And then I got my big block. Um, it looks like tribesmen, but they're bruisers, as you'll see in the list. Um, in that unit, I've got all my characters. My great con with Fort Forup and uh, Kadal's Kadai's Legacy, the D3 wounds carry weapon. BSB with... Um, believe just uh, paired weapons and uh, or he might have the, the shooty upgrade and a, 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 he's got a two up armor save with the um, mithril essence of mithril and a five up age save so he's probably just got paired weapons or maybe he's got a brace of pistols I feel like he had a shooting option and then I got my shamanism shaman who's just a shaman with uh, the magical heirloom two bruiser sticks next to that building you know obviously looking at that center another yeti stick yeti dart and four tuskers and then three merc vets and they've got the devastating charge option and the swift stride and they're just rocking paired weapons so this is my opponent's deployment or counter deployment so he's got his uh from the left to over to the right, he's got his uh, big block of centaurs looking at my rock -a rock He's got a minotaur stick looking at my rock -a rock He's got a cyclops in the middle-ish uh, with that chariot in front of him. Then he's got uh, one of his mogor units next to that, a small block of dogs for chaff, and then his big unit of wild horns uh, behind that wall, uh, five gargoyles, his general on a chariot, and then another minotaur stick. Uh, sort of a picture of my turn one. So I just uh, move up relatively aggressively, I think, on my flank because I'm thinking I've got those Tuskers that can do a lot. You know, his general sort of blocked a little bit right now. So it's pretty good. Um, don't move up all that much with my Rock Rock um, just because I'm sort of zoning each other. And uh, yeah, just starting to move up to be able to fight for that middle with my sticks. I do turn one of my uh, bruiser sticks around because my opponent does have two ambushers um, so that I can sort of zone a little bit of my board, you know, restrict a little bit where they're going to go. And my opponent didn't put down his force, so he put down his force under his dogs, which I thought was a smart idea. Um, going into magic turn one, I tried to get a Titanic summon off. Um, I got it off, but my opponent stopped it with his four dice. And I shoot the crossbow on the rock rock, and I killed two centaurs, so that was nice. I uh, shot at the dogs, so I didn't do anything, unfortunately, so that was a bummer. I would like to even just at least cause a panic test. Uh, I had a one magic face, so not very impactful. And then going into my opponent's turn one. So he's able to chaff me with the dogs, um, which is not great. Um, that makes it a lot, a lot, you know, a lot easier for my opponent to just move up with those centaurs. And then he moves one of his minotaur sticks into the runes that we got uh, the center objective on, so he can, you know, contest it if I don't do anything, uh, either if I don't move up or if I don't, uh, you know, get rid of those minotaurs. And uh, yeah, he kind of just zones me also with his chariot lord. That guy's pretty tough. Um, and then he just sort of uh, moves up the rest of his army. Gets his wizards in that forest uh, critically. There's another good picture of that little face off with those uh, minotaurs. <laughs> My opponent gets a uh, flux card four. 
And uh, I don't really remember his magic being all that impactful. I think uh, I think he got the haste and the hour spell off on my block, and I think it might have done a wound on my BSB, and that was pretty much the big thing. I think that was the biggest thing that happened in the face. His ambushers did come on. Um, I forgot to take a picture of that. Uh, so he puts one behind my bombardiers, and then he puts one, uh, you know, in the flank of those uh, bruisers. So the bruisers do have a long charge, but I want to say it's like a 17 or 18 on the dice. So pretty tough to get on to those, uh, to get those long horns if we can. It's kind of a good pick of uh, looking behind, looking at the big block in the middle. Uh, my opponent does get Blackwing off on his general too. He was able to get that. And he did shoot with his general. He's got the... Um, uh, the lance that's uh, the Hawthorne curse. And he put two wounds on a Tusker, so it's pretty good. And then going into Orkron's turn two. So I charge my Tuskers into his general. I'm only able to get two guys in, but I figure I can just sort of hold him up, maybe do a little bit of damage to him. And then I put both my Yetis and my one of my Bruiser sticks into the Minotaurs. And then I, I really initially I charged my Great Khan at a chariot. Um, that fled, and then it was either do I try and get a 17 into the Wild Horn unit and start killing characters, or do I get an 18 into Cyclops? And I rolled double sixes, and I got into the Wild Horns. Um, that's got his BSB and his two wizards in it, and that guy's perfect for killing characters and pretty resilient. I mean, he's got a 4-4. Four, four, um, you know, they could poke some wounds through, but he's also got the ability where he gets a wound back every turn he does a wound, so... That could be a tough slog for that unit. Uh, there's that fleeing chariot that the Great Con charged. And then I it failed my frenzy check, unfortunately. I was hoping just to get rid of the dogs with the Yetis. Uh, but uh yeah, I think I think I had the reroll from the BSB and I just couldn't couldn't get it to couldn't get it to be under an, an eight. So the rock rock goes in and the Yetis go in and uh yeah, so we just turned the bomb meteors around to try and blow off these Longhorns, and we try to make that charge with the bruisers on the bottom of those Longhorns, too. Um, you know, we did that first, but they failed that, so they're probably going to get charged by those Longhorns. And then, yeah, we're just moving those Merc Vets over. I, kind of looking back, I'm you know, deployed first. I just really felt like I placed those Merc Vets in the wrong spot. They had, had a long way to get to the battle. Um, they definitely should have been Closer to that building, I think. I got flux card five, and I put awake in the beast and savage fury on the yetis. I'm hoping to do as much damage as I can, hoping to do six wounds before the yeti or the minotaurs get a strike, so that just in the hope that the yetis might survive on a wound or two. Uh, kill six longhorns here, but they passed a break test, so they're going to stick around. And unfortunately, we do. Um, this is after combat. We we did do, I think, five wounds with the Yetis, which is pretty good, but we couldn't quite do that last one. So the Minotaurs just strike at the Yetis, and they had taken a wound coming into this rune, so he blows them away. And uh, we do win combat, though, and the Minotaur flees. I elect to hold, and I'm able to stay in the rune there with those bruisers, and that Minotaur actually dies um, in the rune fleeing. So that was great. Uh, yeah, we just can't put any wounds on this guy. Oh my gosh. Um, armor saves and fortitude saves left and right. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, but, uh, we're holding him there. <laughs> this is a terribly blurry picture, but, uh, the wild horn champion gets smushed and receives nine <laughs> wounds from my great con. So, uh, challenge, uh, a duel accepted and, uh, duel conquered by the great con. And over here, we have no problem blowing through the dogs. I like to overrun with the uh, Yetis. I'm able to restrain with the uh, Rock Rock, and I get the Yetis in a decent spot. Um, I wanted them to be a little bit more for They like only went five or so inches. I was hoping to get about a seven or an eight to better block the Centaurs from charging in. At this point, they could charge in, but thankfully, if they charge into the Rock Rock, they only get I think maybe two files, so that's not that bad. Um, but there are some overrun possibilities with the Minotaurs and that Cyclops, so it's not great. 
it, um, but it could be worse, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, going into Beast Herds, turn two. So first thing my opponent does is declare some charges over on the left here. So he initially declares charge the centaurs into the yetis. I, I hold and can't really do anything about that. I uh, and then he declares a charge with I believe just the minotaurs into the rock rock because they could swing around them, and then he declares a charge with the cyclops into the yetis, and he panics them, uh, terrors them, so they have to flee. And then the Cyclops redirects into the Bombardiers, who also fail a re-rollable test um, from the BSB there, who's, who was within 18 inches of both those units. Um, and then they flee as well. And then these uh, Longhorns make it into the, these Bruisers. And thankfully, the only thing that makes it in over here is the Minotaurs. Even though that's not great, those things are still killers for monsters. But um, I think the Centaurs failed a reasonable charge. So that was very fortunate. And then this was a humongous mistake on my part. Uh, uh, I just needed to move my Great Con to the other side of that unit. And I didn't do it. <laughs> and now I have this big block of Mongols in my uh, flank, providing lots of combat res. So this is going to be a tough combat. Um, this is this is probably going to bite me in the butt, folks. But this is what the rest of the battle is looking. The uh, kind of seeing the uh, bombardiers fleeing, the uh, longhorns that uh, got shot just start moving towards the center so they can work on the objective. My opponent did use his gargoyles to chaff the bruisers. And uh, or both the big block of bruisers and the small block of bruisers this turn, so um, that's what they're doing. He gets flux guard too. Uh, he gets spectral blades off on his uh, beast lord. I let that go off, and I uh, I stopped awaken the beast over here, and I think a totem because I I just don't need these these minotaurs to blow through the rock or rock around. <laughs> I mean, they already have the possibility to do so. So this combat goes uh, quite well actually, in that we. Uh, I think we lose, but um, we only lose by one, and the BSB is still relatively close with that 18-inch. So we're able to turn around and hopefully, you know, might, if we get lucky, roll out of this. Uh, he puts four wounds on me. I think I put four wounds on him. So I do have to take break tests, but I was able to stick, um, being steadfast as a monster. So that was good. And then over here, I'm um, just... Throwing all the dice I can at this guy and nothing's sticking. So, um, yeah, he's just, he's shrugging off everything. Um, relatively, I mean, he's got two four up, so he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good to shrug off damage. And he's just picking me off, you know, one by one. Um, I'm kind of think I'm losing by one or two every time. And I'm able to make a, my check since I've got my Discipline 9 General right there. And I've got my BSB close by. So these guys are, are thankfully sticking in this, but they're getting ground out. And then, oh my gosh, so the mongrel champion gets sacked, and I'm down by five, and I make a three on my break test, and I stick with my great con. Whew. Oh my gosh, I could not believe that happened. I thought I thought for sure that this game was over. I was like, okay, well, the great con's going to flee, and um, and then he's going to charge me next turn with the, with the wild horns, and he's going he's gonna to slaughter the bruisers, and he's going to start getting the objective, but nope. Great Khan just sticks it out like a champ, and yeah, we got ourselves a real battle on our hands. So this is uh, going into Ogre Khan's turn three. Uh, I'll just go back one, one a picture. So I rally my Yetis. I charge my Bruiser Stick in the Ruin into the Gargoyles, and uh, I do rally my Bombardiers, too. So that was nice. I was happy to see that happen. Um, and uh, I also charge my BSB con into the mongrels, really just for the combat res. Um, I mean, I, don't, I mean, at this point, he's going to nullify all the combat res that, that that unit is bringing. So now we can just focus on the great con still killing those characters, since at this point, it's only characters left. And uh, yeah, he's just going to keep issuing duels and smoking people in the face. I do get flux card too. Uh, I toss children of Umi out over here in the hopes that this might help this combat. Uh, it did not. 
<laughs> uh, I feel like I learned a, an interesting lesson this game where I feel like I was just buffing the wrong combats with shamanism. Like, like definitely like these sort of less important combats when I like that turn I put out the strength buff and the battle focus buff. That should have been on the, the Tusker Cavalry into the general instead of the Yetis. I should have just accepted that the Yetis were going to get blown away and uh, and just just it had gladly accepted the damage they could have done to those Minotaurs. And same thing happened here where I, I had this hope of, oh, if he doesn't kill one of the one of the bruisers, ooh, I might be able to swing back with, you know, like seven attacks and just, just barely squeak by and maybe win the combat. Maybe, you know, maybe uh maybe make him take a break test. But no, he just did four wounds anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean he's hitting he's hitting pretty well regardless. And then he's he was wounding on Four, so I, I was it, was. it was a long shot uh, of a hope, and and it, it just didn't pay off, and it was a bad move, and it's going to be bad. Uh, so the evocation shaman steps up to the challenge and uh, gets smoked, <laughs> and then over here, um, my BSV does um, some wounds to help the combat, and then as you can see, he's got three wounds on him right now because uh, I use a mammoth hunter as my BSV. I'm still work. I'm still working on that model all the time. Yeah, he puts three wounds on me. Two sixes slip past a three up armor save and a five up Aegis. Just two sixes. Just poke, poke, and now I've got three wounds on my con. Now I'm worried that this con's going to die, and I'm going to be in the same spot I was before. Uh, somehow, I was really impressed with this. I thought the Rock Rock was just going to get just killed um, by these Minotaurs, but it did get to go first, and it just ended up killing him to a man. Um, so that was very fortunate, just a very solid roll, a couple battle focuses, and end up uh, being able to kill those uh, Minotaurs. So that's helpful, at least. Um, now those Centaurs have to go kill the Rock Rock, you know. So that's um, good, I guess. And then this is uh, really starting off my opponent's turn three. So he's able to uh, charge with those Longhorns into that fleeing bruiser, who then panics the Bombardiers and... Uh, they all go off together, unfortunately. So that was a bit, uh, bit unfortunate. The centaurs go into the rock rock. Uh, these are the fleeing gargoyles from last turn. They rallied. Um, the bruisers killed three. They fled, and that was about it. And yeah, this is what we're um, kind of still looking like. There's one tusker still fighting the general. Uh, yeah, the. Uh, Oh, you know what? That's what I think happened. Uh, I think the Longhorns completed a charge into the Fleeing Bruiser, and then looks like they turned around, too. So he didn't go off the board. He got caught, but he panicked the the uh, Bombardiers along the way, unfortunately. So that was a bit rough. Uh, my opponent puts Blackwing on the Centaurs so that they have a, a opportunity to make a long charge on his next turn, which I thought was a really good future planning, considering he knows that this is going to go his way. Uh, it would have to be really badly. He got flux card six, uh, and it, yeah, it goes his way. Um, he just he, yeah, he blows through the rock or rock. Um, unfortunately, it causes a panic in the Yetis, and the Yetis just fly off the board too. So that was uh, a bit bit of a bummer. It would have been nice to have those to make him think about a you know kind of a counter charge, but uh, uh not gonna happen. Uh, so this is going into my turn four. So. Um, yeah, the Great Khan, I think, killed the Shamanism guy this turn. I kind of made sure uh, during my opponent's last phase to just stop his Shamanism buffs. And uh, I'm able to kill him with my uh, my Great Khan. So he's just down to his PSP. And then it's on this turn. Uh, and the Mongols just kind of happened to break on that previous turn. Um, no rhyme or reason. They just kind of failed their discipline checks finally. And uh, I was able to catch them with my bruiser. So that was really big. Um, thankfully, he didn't get that extra poke. <laughs> He's still alive. And then he made a charge into the gargoyles who fled. And then he just sort of stayed where he was at. He couldn't really go any further. And you, as you can see, uh, my Tuskers were killed um, on my opponent's turn. And then I was able to charge my Merc Vets into his general. And I'm, I'm hoping the Merc Vets can do something here. You know, they got strength six coming in. So... Um, and a ton of attacks. We'll see what happens there. And the bruisers in the rune are just sort of holding it down, um, trying to um, keep scoring the objective for my uh, my army. And then we're up two points at this point. So if we can hold on to this round, we uh, we win. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
uh, put the rod of battle on my uh, uh, bruiser block. I get a couple buffs off, and we just blow through the wild horns. Um, I pursue them with my bruiser block and catch them. Uh, almost make it into the general, but not quite. And then I turn my uh, uh, great con around to look at the centaurs. And this is going into my opponent's turn four. He charges his Cyclops into the Bruisers in the Rune, and the Centaurs go into my Great Con, because they have a good possible overrun into the Bruiser block. And uh, as you can see, at the, this is kind of at the end of the round. Um, my opponent has no more magic at this point, so we kind of went over that. And unfortunately, the, man, uh, the Centaurs just... You know, even coming up with all that strength seven, I just have a four page save. I think he gets two wounds through because um, he only has like eight or so attacks. They might have failed their their um, primal fury too. I think that might have been what saved me there actually. Because um, what ends up happening is the great con ends up killing four or something <laughs> just with his normal attack. You know, just with his attacks, and uh, we end up sticking. Um, no problem. I think I end up winning combat and he has to take a test. The Cyclops managed to make it into the Bruisers and beats them and, and runs them down. So now we actually had a, a, a real fight for the objective because my opponent was able to score a point with his, uh, with his uh, I think with his Longhorns, actually. So on my turn five, I uh, remember I still have a single mark pet fighting uh, the the uh, Beast Lord. They also just couldn't do anything. My opponent just make them four or four or two saves left and right. Uh, they just kind of ignore him. Decide that they're just going to move right towards the middle because um, just I want to I want to keep my uh, my keep my one up at least, and I'm winning on the objective, so I just need to uh, have something scoring nearby. And uh, yeah, I move my base V over because he's got two pistol shots. He's going to try and cause a panic test on this Longhorn unit, and uh, and he's not too worried about the flank charge. Um, or I kind of wanted to. I wanted to stop my opponent from just being able to march right up into it. And at this way, he can charge there, but he has to get through me. He can't just march right there. So I felt that was a reasonable strategy. I put Savage Fury up here um, just because, kind of had spells. Um, and then I put Awakened Beast off here for toughness um, because he does, um, you know, have a, a Cyclops still. Um, this makes me resilient six, which makes the Catapult Wound on a three up. And, uh, yeah, uh, the Great Khan's able to beat on the centaurs. They flee. And uh, I can't. I was unfortunately missed with my pistol shots, so I couldn't cause a uh, panic test on the, the Longhorns. Um, and, honestly, <laughs> this, was, this was pretty tough. This is, um, I think, my opponent's... I feel like this was a six... I don't know if I lost a turn here, but I want to say this was the last turn we played. Because what happened is my opponent made a charge into my Great Khan with his Beast Lord. Who actually, he does have two wounds. He he took two wounds very, through those various combats. And he needed to charge over this wall. He fails his dangerous terrain, and then he fails his fortitudes, one after another. And just explodes on this wall. And just now my great con doesn't even have to worry about it. <laughs> so really unfortunate there. Um that 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 was ridiculous. That shouldn't have happened. He should have at least got in, and then it's sort of like a toss-up for who wins that. Probably advantage on the great con since I'm at full wounds. It, it would have been a maybe a bad panic test. But kind of what ends up happening is my opponent also attempts to declare this charge the Longhorns, and he fails that. So what kind of ends up really being the thing is uh, why we end up kind of just calling this game at this point is my opponent is able to, or I, I was able to just, uh, so yeah, so the Longhorns failed their charge in the BSB. So we're, we're tied on the objective and my opponent was not going to have another chance to really be able to do anything. I want to say this must have been turn six. Yeah. 
I think so. I don't know. Maybe this was five. And we just sort of called it here because my opponent was feeling a little helpless. It really, I mean, it really fell apart for him this turn. I want to say this might have only been turn five and we ended up just calling it here. Uh, I gave him, he, he took one more shot at the Cyclops and he just missed on uh, the BSB. And yeah, I think, I think we do end up just uh, sort of calling it here. Um, even though I guess he would have had maybe one more shot with the... Uh, yeah, because I don't think I would have charged the BSB into the Cyclops. That's asking for hurt. Uh, uh, maybe I would have. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's tough. I don't know. Um, but I definitely could have gotten rid of another one of his scoring units. And then, um, I mean, I definitely could have actually... I, I mean, the Bruisers go into the Longhorns in front of them, take a bunch of DTs, but I got my leadership right there. And then... Uh, yeah, the, the general goes into the centaurs, kills them. So at the very least, he's really just left at that one Longhorn unit. And uh, they could try and make a fight for it, but that's a, a pretty tough fight. So. so we ended up calling it here, and this is the end of the game. So after tailing it all up where it stood, my opponent scored 2,530 victory points. I, with my Ogrecon, scored 4,135. So that ends up being a 17-3 with the objective win for the Ogrecons. Want to thank everybody for watching and have a good rest of your Memorial Day.